Welcome Hello. back to the Feel Good Show. Yeah. I'm back on the stage right now. I can't wait to appear more screen time on TV. I want to be famous. Okay, never mind. Oh. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. So um, we're gonna talk. Uh, uh, we're gonna touch on civic refresh. We're gonna discuss on certain things, which is um, ibu bapa, mm-hmm. ibu bapa, tangga kejayaan kanak-kanak. How true is that? But but before that, we, uh, before kita tanya pasal ibu bapa tangga kejayaan anak-anak, kan, macam dia orang support and everything, I nak tanya you juga lah, Arun, mm. kan? Macam, I know you're a very smart guy. Oh. Because the way you talk, you're a very, you know, factual person and then you are macam, semuanya ada facts lah, tanya ni. You are macam like, macam uh, a walking dictionary di mana kalau I tak tahu apa, I akan tanya ni. <laughs> so, my question is, because you're a smart and then you choose to be an actor, yeah. masa you will choose nak jadi pelakon tu, your parents um, support tak? Okay, when I, bila I nak jadi pelakon, uh, as I said tadi lah, mm-hmm. uh, my parents, diorang, diorang support but not as if macam, okay, you should do this, you should not that kind of support. Mm-hmm. Because at the end of the day, diorang pun have diorang punya traditional beliefs. You know, they want the yeah. iron rice bowl. Mm-hmm. You nak kena ada kerja tetap. But mm-hmm. but the one thing I love about my parents, diorang selalu macam, okay, if this is really what you want, we'll support you in any way we can. Mm. You know, because diorang pun tak ada, diorang tak ada experience dalam bidang ni. So, diorang yeah. tak boleh bantu dari segitu. But they are always like macam, okay, if you need anything, kalau kita mampu, kalau you short duit while you're trying to build a name ke. Mm. My brother especially, banyak tolong I. Mm. Uh, but, but but thanks to them, thanks to them, since mm-hmm. I'm now, Alhamdulillah, I'm very established and mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm very grateful for, for the income that I have. I can afford to go for a haircut at Shaw Cutler. Oh my god. <laughs> yes, your hair is looking dapper. I mean, come on dia lah. Dia macam, every time I jumpa you, sekejap dia macam gelap, sekejap cerah, sekejap gelap, sekejap cerah. Lepas tu, sekejap ada remo, sekejap flat. Ah, tak tahu lah. <laughs> Dahlah, I mean, I mean Shaw Cutler has played a lot, uh, a lot of... Uh, I mean, he had played a huge part in, in mm-hmm. making my grooming lah. You know, and they are one of the best in Malaysia. So, yeah. I'm proud to be with them, you know. Yeah, but anyways, enough anyways. on that. So, <laughs> sekarang ni, I'm going to invite Mr. Ali Raza who, uh, dia pengarah serantau Asia Tenggara Beacon House which is, uh, they, 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 they base their education on, on Cambridge. Mm-hmm. So, uh, people who study with them, even in Malaysia, they will take O levels instead. Mm-hmm. So, uh, we're going to talk more. We're going to discuss more tentang peranan ibu bapa dalam education. So, let's invite Mr. Ali Raza down. Mr. Ali Raza, are you there? Yeah. Hi, welcome to the Feel Good Show. Hello, welcome to the Feel Good Show. Hi. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello. Have a seat, Mr. Ali Raza. <coughs> okay, so, um, okay, parents, right? Um, the, the, their role in, in grooming uh, or, 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 or I, I don't know, I'm tr- guiding the, their kids. I mean, how important are they in, in, in the education and, and the success of kids? Well, I think uh, that's a question we get asked almost every day. Mm. And uh, now, uh, unfortunately, the kind of uh, times we live in now, when parents, essentially both parents, mothers and fathers, both end up working, and uh, essentially working for longish hours. Now, the challenge for them is that how do they actually contribute towards the upbringing of their kids. Mm. So now I think uh, schools are put in a more responsible position where a lot of these expectations which essentially earlier were taken care by the, uh, of by the parents mm. have also moved towards the schools. Mm. Okay. So I mean now uh, we feel that parents are becoming more and more demanding when it comes to education and when it comes to schools. So and I think there's a bit of a guilt somewhere there where they feel that since they are not doing their part of the job, so they're kind of passing the buck towards the school. So, I mean, it's becoming increasingly difficult. But I still feel that uh, there is a lot of uh, things, the values, for example, uh, empathy, uh, uh, hard work, uh, some of these things, which schools, uh, so for example, Beacon House School System, we have a lot of emphasis on our learner's profile, the student Mm -hmm. we are trying to develop for the future. Mm. So we, we uh, in addition to the academics, we are working on developing a very holistic personality. Like, for example, empathy, there's the analytical skills, this, that and the other. So while the schools are essentially doing that, we expect the parents to complement those same values at the house. Mm-hmm. So that the child does not get confused. You okay. know? So they have to stay. Uh, so whatever we yeah. are kind of uh, teaching, it kind of gets complemented and reinforced at the houses. So I think that's really what yeah. the... So I think Parents and schools have to work in tandem and they have to have this partnership Mm -hmm. to Mm. inculcate the same values. So I think that's where I think parenting is still extremely important and these parents have to work 
with the kids directly. I mean, that's really how I look at it. Okay. Um, kepada penonton yang tidak dapat tangkap apa Mr. Ali cakap, okay, basically apa yang dia mengatakan adalah ni lah, okay. Memang, uh, memang sekarang ni, zaman sekarang kita punya ibu bapa lebih lebih mengharapkan sekolah untuk mendidik. Mm-hmm. Supaya, I mean, tentang kejayaan kita, whatever not lah. Uh, tapi apa yang Mr. Ali mengatakan adalah, okay, memang diorang akan tolakkan tanggungjawab ke sekolah. Tapi macam mana pun ada juga ciri-ciri yang kita patut uh, enforcekan dekat atas anak-anak kita yeah. uh, at school and also dekat rumah mm-hmm. because like like what he say we need to work hand in hand parents yeah. have to work together they need to dia orang nak kena instill that value kat atas anak-anak dia orang mm-hmm. uh, even at home Betul. Dia kena yeah. macam bekerjasama sebab value yang diajarkan di sekolah macam ni. Jadi ibu bapa yang bekerja ataupun yang macam mak yang bekerja, dia kena faham orang kata apa macam mana ajaran dan teaching di sekolah. Jadi dia boleh complement uh, the values mm. uh, dan juga membentuk anak mereka. Yeah. So mm. uh, another thing I have in uh, I'm wondering. Okay, since you say that, okay, maybe the parents feel like, oh, you know what? I'm pushing it to you now. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I mean, okay, would you call that a bad thing because you know sometimes for some people will say hey you're spoiling your child you know and, and and wouldn't that even affect the upbringing of the child as well i mean because you know it's the school's fault that he doesn't do well everything is the school's fault that's what they all do when they get mad mm-hmm. but i mean I, that doesn't help in shaping the child yeah i think that, right? like you said i mean it's a shared responsibility so yeah. i don't think that one of the parties should just put the emphasis on the yeah. other Mm-mm. i think <clears throat> so that is exactly when i say that <clears throat> schools uh, uh, have their responsibility so uh, just to make sure that we bridge this gap we have a lot of these parent teacher meetings where mm-hmm. we call in the parents we want to discuss the progress or the uh, uh, the uh, the kind of things we are doing with that child so that the parents are aware mm-hmm. so i i always encourage parents to attend those meetings because these are very very crucial because we are talking about the future of their children mm-hmm. so i think these are some of those dialogues which a parent I mean, a school as teachers as school management they would have with the parents so that we are essentially on the same page and we have a common i mean interest which is to develop that child into a holistic personality which essentially means that it's not just the academics but all these other ethical values mm. we want to inculcate in these students we should be able to yeah. do that so it kind of uh, works that way but and i think now parents are actually uh, so they've started to trust the educational institutions and they want to work with us and i mean that's really how uh, it is okay i should have a I have a one question uh, okay um usually uh, when children go to school is all about academic stuff you know getting good grades and uh, you know being excellent but you know some children they are uh, more towards like the arts or like you know sports they're not and academics. stuff they are not very academics and then they are more practical mm. kind of like children so, where they excel yeah. in something different so when the school picked up all these values and uh, i would say um passion um how you actually translate it to parents so they understand like okay your well, child is more <coughs> okay so uh, since all of us come from uh, asia yeah so we asians are very very particular about grades yeah. yes <laughs> okay and the other problem with us is that we are very uh, focused on uh, uh, the the a safe path for these children so i mean back in the day i mean even in uh, even now a lot of parents i mean they kind of decide the careers for their children mm-hmm. uh, and obviously they would want to decide a career which they feel not yes. the kids yeah. but they feel is very safe yeah so they still prefer their kids going for medicine or, Lawyer, or engineering doctor, or yeah. doing law or maybe all these very safe professions now the problem is that we as educationists the biggest challenge you know what mm-hmm. we face today is that in this very rapid changing world earlier we used to say the generation gap is 5 years 10 years but now actually the generation gap is shrinking so yeah. it is very difficult to predict uh so let's say if i have a child of 3 and a half year old in my system and he will graduate after let's say 14 15 years i have to prepare him for that world yes. which is going to be after 15 years out there mm. so how do i first of all i have to imagine that world and then prepare this kid for that particular world so i mean and sometimes it happens it so happens that it is difficult for us to convince the parents we can see that in future you will have a lot of people going into let's say arts i mean social media there's 
uh, there are so many new f um, uh, uh, kind Strings, of uh, yeah. uh, uh, things opening up that parents are still not really getting that. And this is the job of our educationists. And I think one of the biggest challenge which we face is it is not just educating the kids. It is at times educating those parents. Yes. Which is such a big challenge that, mm. I mean, we struggle with mm -hmm. it. But we, we try to at least give them those uh, avenues and uh, open up their minds so that they don't I mean, force their kids to follow a certain profession which they would not really enjoy once you, they get into that field. So mm. yeah, okay. So uh, kepada penonton, kalau nak tahu sikit apa yang Mr. Ali cakap, okay, apa yang apa yang dia tengah cakap, okay. Sometimes kita sebagai ibu bapa, kita nak kena nak kena estimate lah dalam masa 15 tahun lepas lepas anak kita dah graduate. Betul. So kita nak kena bayangkan dunia yang dia akan hidup because itu dah masuk zaman dia. Yeah. So kita as parents kita nak kena ikut zaman tu and we have to actually understand like a lot of things yang they are not aware. So macam Mr. Ali cakap, kadang-kadang kita bukan just have to educate budak-budak tau. Tapi kadang-kadang the parents pun kita nak kena fahamkan buka minda dia orang. Buka minda dia orang. Uh -huh. Because macam dia cakap, orang yang nak nak, nak apa biasanya kita akan main uh, main ke arah yang selamat. Jadi uh -huh. doktor, jadi lawyer, jadi law, apa jadi pilot, engineer. engineer. Yeah. So tapi sekarang ni, zaman sekarang kita tengok kalau waktu dulu orang tak nampak. Uh -huh. Jadi sekarang sejak ada social media, orang lagi boleh boleh explore, ce, uh, boleh ceburi lagi dalam bidang artistik sebab dia ada lagi platform untuk untuk show dia uh -huh. dia skills. Uh -huh. So uh, at times also we ask as parents kita nak kena keep up to date with Betul. what's going to happen. Dengan perubahan teknologi yeah. sebab 15 years ago kalau kita tengok tak ada pun orang macam terfikir yang graphic designer ataupun you know it sounds effect it will become a really major yeah. um, you know macam career but right now mm -mm. all these effects all these editings oh my god you make a lot of money out you of that. You can be so... self made artist. <laughs> yes. You know. So yeah. times have changed in that yeah, sense. That's right. yeah. yeah. Okay. So I mean that's really the challenge which yeah. I think now parents should realize and start coming to terms yeah. with those things. And right? you have to be a bit more open. That's right. Yeah. 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 Okay, so um, okay, on this topic about parents playing a role in the kid's success, okay, before we end off to a commercial break, do you have any last things to say regarding this? Well, I think they, if they put their children in a particular institution, so I mean obviously they do a lot of their homework while they uh, are discussing or deciding on which particular school their kids should go to, then they should essentially trust those schools with the academics and with but the with whatever yes. values mm. are we inculcating. I mean, I just want to give you an example. Which um, so I moved here in March. Mm. I got this email uh, a couple of uh, months later, uh, uh, sent by a parent because we do kind of uh, connect with them through the email. So if they have any uh, thing to say about or concerns regarding a particular school we have, mm -hmm. they would send me an email. So now this email was very shocking for me. I mean, a particular parent was saying that uh, uh, why do we have sports in the school? Uh, we think that uh, students waste time if they play sports. Mm. So, what? I mean, you know, so sometimes it becomes very difficult. So I had to respond to them that when we are talking of developing a holistic personality, we are not just thinking of grades yeah. because oh. we are preparing this child for the future. So I would request all these parents to let these kids grow at their own pace. Yeah. Let them enjoy life. I mean, just don't get too fixated on kids. These are brilliant kids and they, they do uh, definitely much better than what our generation yeah, I mean, So I've got yeah. a lot of faith and hope and, and optimism when it comes to the new generation. So I think just give them more space. That's yeah. the message. Yeah, I mean, like. at the end of the day, even sports actually groom us as a person eventually. I mean, the, you, 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 you learn... Yeah, exactly. I was like, hey, I, I'm... The I, life, I, I, no, no. You learn your life skills playing team sports. Exactly. I mean, yeah. your resilience, your, your teamwork. I mean, these things all come from sports. You know what? Yeah. I really wish we had more time to talk yeah. on this because there's pleasure. so much, there's pleasure, so much to venture in on this. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, we don't have any more time. Thank you but very it was, much. It was a pleasure to have you on our what show. What a pleasure. Mr. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you so much. Okay, so selepas ini, saya akan ke dapur saya nak preparekan makanan yang sedap which is bite size so kalau you guys nak tahu saksikan so, nanti so it's italiana eh it's italian it's italian italiano meets uh fransi after this yeah. jangan lain dia jangan lain kita pergi commercial break dulu dah <laughs> <laughs> tunggu dia pronounce lambat <laughs> it's like the cough right thank cough. you